I want to talk to you about how metabolism actually works, like what's involved, what affects it, because we kind of just led to believe that this metabolism is quite a simple thing. It's calories in versus calories out. You burn a certain amount of calories per day and that's all there is to it. But actually, there is quite a lot to it. It's quite a complicated chemical process that is affected by a lot more than simply what you eat and how much exercise you do. And that's why it's so important that we talk about it because the default for most of us is to try to control the amount of calories we're burning, the amount of calories we're putting into our body um, in order to lose weight. However, that is a really small piece of the puzzle when you're trying to lose weight and be healthier it's it you no know, it does need to be a factor we do need to be conscious and making sure that we're not overeating however often we put too much emphasis on this calorie balance um, and we can get really fixated on that and totally forget about all the other things that impact your metabolism and the things that can actually slow your metabolism or increase your metabolism and if we focus more on repairing our metabolism and improving it then we don't need to worry so much about the calories and how many we're putting in and how many we're burning because if you're supporting your metabolism to be as efficient and as healthy as possible then um then you know you don't need to be eating such a restrictive diet so really what it is at its core is um it's the chemical reaction that happens in your body so this is something that we actually test on most of our clients who come through the nourish method uh, by looking at the waste products in your urine you can see how well your metabolism is working in terms of how well you're taking fats and carbs and proteins, breaking them down, putting them through your little energy factories that you have in every cell in your body and how well they are fueling that energy production cycle. Um, so really what metabolism, metabolism is, is how we take our fuel and turn it into energy. And um, that fuel may come from our food, it may come from our body's own stores of fats and muscle and sugar stores and the exercise that we do impacts um, you know, how much energy we need and therefore how many calories are burned. But also there's other factors, so things like your biochemistry. So all of the many different chemical reactions that are happening in your body, be that digestion, be that muscle building, be that brain development, if you're you know, doing a lot of work that requires a lot of brain power, that has a really big impact on your calorie need as well. So these are some processes in your body that affect kind of the demand for calories. But the, the biggest thing overall that impacts your metabolism is kind of your overall health, the balance of your hormones, the balance of your blood sugars, how uh, your, your level of inflammation and something called oxidative stress uh, which is to do with damage that can happen in your cells um, things like your gut bacteria these all impact your metabolism and they impact it because they're either setting your little energy factories up to work really efficiently or they're producing toxins or causing some sort of uh, disruption that slows down that process so in every cell in your body, pretty much every cell in your body, you have what's called mitochondria and these are the little energy factories. And there's a, a cycle happening, a sort of chain reaction where you're taking your fuel and turning it into energy. And um, there's things that speed that up and they're those things, are things like certain nutrients, antioxidants, um, fuel or things that help to kind of catalyze that reaction. 
So your nutrients help to make your metabolism work more efficiently. And there's other things that can block that cycle, which can be things like toxins, which can come from your gut, gut bacterial imbalance. It can come from your food. It can come from environmental pollutants. It can come from stress in terms of any type of stress, be it psychological stress or physical stress like pain or under eating, anything that causes a stress response in your body will disrupt this process. And inflammation is something that um, causes a lot of disruption in your body and can again impact this energy production cycle. So this cycle where we're taking our fuel and turning it into energy, aka burning fat. So there are lots of things that impact how quickly this functions, you know, on a on a minute by minute basis, there's it can fluctuate based on how many toxins are in your body and how many nutrients you have. And then there's other factors that are more consistent that can also be addressed, like your muscle mass. So the your muscle mass will determine how many of these energy factories you have. So we can control how many of these energy factories we have by building up our muscle mass and we can control how efficiently these energy factories work by addressing some of these underlying imbalances that can slow down or disrupt the the energy production cycle or the metabolism. So what that means is when you look at it as a big picture, when you're dieting or you're cutting down in some way or you're increasing your exercise trying to burn as many calories as possible you do all you're doing is putting less fuel on the fire um to kind of reduce the amount of calories that may be left over and may be stored but if you come at it from the other angle where you're making these energy factories or your metabolism more efficient and you're increasing the number of energy factories or essentially opportunities for your metabolism to be efficient, then the restrictive element of it doesn't need to be such a big focus. So I hope that makes sense. I, I feel like um, I've kind of jumped around all over the place when trying to explain that. Um, but hopefully the main point that you can take away from this is that, yes, whilst cutting down a little bit can be helpful, it's a relatively short term solution because it's very difficult to sustain in the long term. Um, and when you restrict you can actually miss out on some really important nutrients that are needed for your metabolism to work efficiently. And when we're cutting down too much, it's impossible for your body to build muscle because you're in a catabolic state, which is where we're breaking down tissue. Um, your body has to be in a catabolic state in order to break down fats. And so if you're trying to break down fat by starving yourself, then you're going to be breaking down muscle as well, which isn't going to help you build up your metabolism, which is why we get that rebound weight gain when we go back to eating normally or we have, you know, a day off, day of indulgence, holiday, whatever. So hopefully you can see that the restrictive approach is a short term one that doesn't tend to lead to lasting results. And that's why the Nourish Method, we attack it from different angles, ones that are all about improving your metabolism and making your metabolism work more efficiently. So I hope this has been helpful. Give this video a like if it has. And uh, I'll see you soon. Have a really good day.